All right, man. I'm going live in three, two, one. Sino Gaddafi, welcome to the study story. Good, Tell us fish, man. Good to have you. Good to be here. Salute, man. A little Salute. bit of yak right here in the room too. Oh, too yeah. many taps. He taps the table. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, man. We were talking a little bit on the way here. Switched over. Woo! Yeah. Switched over to small amounts of liquor to versus having more beers than usual, man. Because, like, that beer right. filled me up. But that right there was nice. Yeah, the liquor do better, man. <sighs> yeah, that was a nice punch, man. So, what's up, man? How you been? Yeah, shit, you been good. good. Just you had a little up. baby girl out here. Oh, shit. Trying to get her together, so. What's her name? Ari. What's I where, where's, where's Ivy come from? Ivy, man, you know, well, I'm kind of defiant, so <laughs> the yeah. word Ivy comes from the island that Christopher Columbus came to and then named it Trinidad after he left. And oh, we shit. don't know what the hell he talking about because he just got lost while he was upon sea out there. So yeah. Her name's uh, Ivy. That's the <laughs> island. That's, that's the beautiful. name of it. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. We're not um we're not we're not really fans of of Columbus Day around uh around our circles anyway. <laughs> anyways. But I mean it's it's a day off and what do you do with a day off, man? Do what you can. Excellent. But yeah, man, so look, you've been uh, you've been putting in work in in the studio since like I met you when you were seventeen. And yeah. before you even stepped into the the stew at Dark Knight, you had already had a CD that had like seven tracks and you brought it over to Yak's house and it was this like raw demo, so you had experience in the studio. He was loving it. Joe. Yeah, you had experience in the studio. Talk about your experience in the studio, at like seventeen and prior. Like, where did that that first CD come from? <sighs> Different studios, or was it like one? That first CD came from the same studio. I actually recorded that shit. You know how I used to have the little microphone that stand up like that? It's a little joint that stand up. You gotta plug the headphones in the uh. Yeah. Like in the CPU, like this one or more like a stage mic. No, a little lesser than that, a little skinny yeah. jump, like a, just a little speech mic. I, I don't think I've ever seen those. Yeah, so my man, he had a little recording program on his computer. We used a little speech mic, some little <laughs> five dollar headphones, and that's how we recorded. Who did the Who did the actual like mixing and like making cleaning it up? You know, oh my dude, Super B. And when the, the first time he heard me speak, he was like. Just come to the booth. You don't got to pay nothing. We're going to sit here and work on it. He just got his equipment, so. Nice. You know, some trial yeah, error are always good. You ever uh, you ever recorded anything on a karaoke machine? Hell yeah. That's how I learned, karaoke how, to, machine, that's how yeah. I learned how to do one take. <laughs> yeah. That's how, cause you, you had to do one take. Let's see, that's, <laughs> see that's, that's one thing people don't know when they record digital, man. It's like you had to get it right in one take. And you had to get your double, your ad lib mm -hmm. right in one take. And if you got more than one person spitting on a track, they got to come in if you only got one mic, and y'all both got to get it right yeah, on one you gotta take. you got to be in sync with it. Man, that's work. Or you can have two karaoke machines. You record your first vocals, put it in the other karaoke machine, put the beat on, record it, and then you get your doubles. I never did that before. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's that's another cool, that's another interesting thing. See, if, if y'all don't know uh, Sino Gaddafi, but... Uh, he's been putting in work for a long time, man. And like we, a lot of uh, a lot of modern day rappers, like whether they're you know whether I got love for them or I'm not really feeling what they're doing, a lot of young rappers don't know what it was like to work on that old equipment. And like one of the <laughs> things that Sino can uh, testify to is the transition from going analog to digital and from like no tools to pro tools. Yeah, CDR is becoming a thing, man. Like when did you start recording? Uh, let's let's say like. In uh, in digital, like when you you talking about like going like the, you had like you were ready to press a CD. When I was ready to press a CD, it was probably I was like, like seventeen. Yeah, two thousand five, two thousand six. Luckily, yeah, my man. homie had the. Well, we had a. I had a computer at my house too. My homie had the software and shit. That and you did beats to too, it, right? You, know? you loop. Yeah, beats. yeah, hell yeah. That nice. was my looping beats. Yeah. Sound recorder, sixty seconds. All you gotta do is keep looping it, <laughs> copy and paste it, make sure the synchronization on point. See, Y'all gotta, y'all gotta understand how to use. They the equipment, not, man. they not gonna be able to make a beat. I guarantee you, take the average beat maker, give them sound recorder with sixty seconds and a beat sequence. They yeah. cannot get up there and make a beat. Oh man, yeah man. See, that's that's another thing. Like the um, the amount of creativity it takes to put work out, man. And then you, and then you, uh, and then we got you to work on 
mixtape volume one that was land of the green that was the summer that was more than a rapper that was uh the last one um i, I can't even remember all the names right now but like that that was a cool experience having you in the stew for that so like the songs that became volume two and then the project grind state mm. that like one of the one of the main things that i liked about you is like when i listened to your shit it was like this is the stuff that's really happening in this cast life you would talk about like the experiences and then like we would have conversations about who is like uh in who's this person in that song who's that person in that song yeah. um one of the main people i remember is chris and yeah. you did a song <laughs> dedicated to him uh, talk about chris a little bit tell tell us who's who chris was in your life <laughs> well that nigga was <laughs> God. Good dude. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless my nigga, you know what I'm saying? God bless his soul. That was my best friend, you know what I'm saying? I knew the nigga since I was five years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, along with my nigga Josh. You feel me? And he was only a year older than me, but I wasn't. Like, a lot of niggas was more mature than me. When did you meet him? Like, you know how old were you guys? I was five. You know what I'm saying? When I met him, I um, moved to North Carolina when I was like maybe three or four from Virginia or whatever. And my mother was talking to my sister's father. And he is his nephew. Chris is his nephew. So that's how I met him. We've been running around ever since then, fighting each other, disagreeing. But did he, did he get in the booth? Did he rap? He rapped, but he would more like tell me what to say. Okay. Like instead of him like going to rap, he would be like, the idea. Talk man. about that. Yeah, you okay. know what I'm saying. Like he. That's 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 a precursor <laughs> to the producer. You know yeah, what I mean. He was like the nigga to tell me what to do, not tell me what to do. Like like a director. Yeah, like you feel not me? a he slave master. He's a he's what a man supposed to be like. Like he taught me how to change my first battery in the car, change the tire. Like he taught me what a man supposed to have. Like anything that I wanted to do. He taught me how to do life like, shit. Yeah, life. Not no gangster shit. He ain't never want me to be no motherfucking gangster dog. He ain't never put no gun in my hand. Even when it was beef, nigga, he would go holler at the niggas by himself. You feel me? Like yeah. he would never do me like that. And he was only a year older than me, but <laughs> he treated yeah. me like goddamn. He was just there for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like so. Yeah. And you knew his family too. Y'all were all Hell close. Yeah, I mean, I know five years mother. old. I that's still like, know his mother right now. I can slide up to the crib, get something cool. to eat. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Shout Possibly. out my dukes, man. Hell yeah, shout out. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's. It's it's a I mean you know we're gonna link up to all Sino's music on uh, on Dark Knight on uh, any other link that he's got and y'all get to hear his life stories and shit and one of the things was uh, behind the the Chris story is a little bit of tragedy like and one of the things that connects us is we both knew Yak yeah. and you know everybody <laughs> knows his situation he's been gone like twelve years or so and you know so uh, tell us what happened with yeah. Chris Chris. Um it's just, shit is actually crazy. I had just left North Carolina too and shit. Like my mother always tell me, nigga, you know if you would have never left North Carolina, you would have been, like you would have been in the car with them. You know what I'm saying? Like they coming back from McDonald's on a little slight ass road, and that nigga's the best driver I ever knew. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And car spun out of control. Like he flew through the windshield. My other best friend was in the car with him. Both of them died the same night. Like. Smack like right after each other. Chris died first. Josh died right after him and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that and was you, two years right after my stepfather passed. You know what I'm saying? So that really had me like on some other shit. Like, and you feel real strongly that had you been there in that area with him, that you would have been right there. Yeah, I was riding with them niggas every <laughs> every day, everywhere. Like I'm just about to thinking about the shit because we would be like everywhere, like with each other. Everywhere. That's a hell of a thing you to know, know that thing. like. You know, know you know for a fact that like I would've that would have been it. Like that would have been saying? my moment, man. That's that's serious shit. So like and that's and that's that's again one of the one of the uh artistic points that um that I was talking about with Sino earlier is like the the life story, the the reality in the in the music and the bars and like that's that's why I always enjoy getting you on the mic, man. So what um getting to to verses and bars like and, and storytelling in general, like why why not just spit punchlines why why tell 
life experience? Why oh, why open up? Why not just punch like punchline is like or as that means close to or damn near talking about. If you hit a nigga with a real line, he has to feel it. A punchline, all right, that shit sound cool or whatever, but it's just a filler. Like Pac, like like story, classic yeah, storytelling. Yeah, going in. Like, because yeah. you can say some extra shit if you want, and that shit might be hot, but if you hitting a nigga with some simple like life shit, it's going to yeah. hit him harder than that punchline going to hit him. It's only Another nigga going to hear your punchline and flip it. How many yeah. times you going to say that punchline over and over again? Yeah, you do hear things repeated like, <laughs> and... The punchline is nothing. That's why I try not to dwell on it. And if I hear you spit a whack punchline, I will flip your shit. Because yeah. you shouldn't have did it like that. But I will write something better. Like, <laughs> That's what's Just life bars. So when you say write, are you, uh, are you, are you a digital writer? <clears throat> you still go not handwriting? Digital. Handwritten. Handwritten. Because, nigga, your phone could die any minute. You could go take a piss in the bathroom and yeah. be texting. And your shit dropping the toilet. You ever now find you yourself making up. a note and nope. saving it for later? Nope. Straight, straight hand. Yeah, on my hand or either in That's my what's head. Up. Like, because you can't trust technology and shit. So you recorded and save it and send it right back to yourself. I, I actually, I think I got to see one of your verses like up close, and you you explained to me like not all the words were written down, and you said like you you don't write everything down all the time. That sometimes yeah. like you just like know what to say and you just you leave it at that. Yeah, because I don't want to... When you... That's the thing. When you write a rough draft, that's really the best draft of your paper that you're ever going to have. So, I'm not going to go back and keep revising this shit. Yeah. Because I wanted you to get the feeling of it when it's coming out. If I keep going back over a piece of paper and writing over and over again, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear that shit in a nigga voice. Okay. Bro, when he rapping and shit, you know what I'm saying? Versus him just going in there like, this what I want to say. Yeah. Like so, sometimes I don't put no words in there, so my brain could just do whatever the fuck it wants to. You did um, you did Project Grind State. Mm-hmm. That was a thick. That was like twenty some tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> talk about that time. Not just not just not just the songs and Project Grind State, but like what's what was behind. What is the stories? What time of your life was Project Grind State? Project Grind State, man. That shit was around like two thousand. 10 through 2012 maybe like and that shit was just it was thick it was just a time when i ain't gonna say when i was on my own because i i ain't gonna say i've been on my own all my life because my mother and my father they've been around to help me and shit nobody should ever discredit them i'm tired of y'all niggas saying y'all got it out without the mood without no help and shit because right, right. moms and pops they did help a nigga out and shit but Sometimes you just step outside the nest and shit, and you the only person that's going to be there for you. And the Project Grind State was just me not asking nobody for shit, trying to figure out my life and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Going through shit. I mean, Statue of Limitations up. Shootouts, motherfucking niggas motherfucking stealing work and shit like that. You got to go get that shit back because you got to eat tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit, like, these young niggas get out here, bro, they think this shit is a game, bro. Like, a, a real gangster can really tell, bro, if you real when he walk up on you, bro. Like, from your head to your motherfucking toe, dog. So, stop perpetrating that shit out of this joint. Like, Project Grind State, bro, that shit was real, nigga. Sleeping yeah. on floors. Gaming this bitch to stay at her motherfucking house. It's tax season, so goddamn, I'm trying to get a band and a half from her. I'm about to slide to her cousin's house. She cooking me breakfast in the morning. You feel me? Like shit is real, bro. Like in the jets, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas don't understand. Like it ain't even about a high class or a low class person. It's about if you gotta survive or not. And sometimes when you gotta fucking survive, you're gonna get into a grind state. That's your mind, bro. You grinding, bro. You're not gonna fail, bro. Yeah. It don't matter what's going on around you, you know what I'm saying? Even if you gotta fucking do some shit that you won't wanna say you did. Keep it eat. to your motherfucking self, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you have to eat at the end of the day, and it ain't even about you. Your mama or your sister or your cousin or your goddamn kids might call you for something. Yeah. So you gotta stay on it because at the end of the day, when ain't nobody left for you to call or for them to call, you got the answer to that shit. You got to get in the grind state. That's I was real. In the projects grinding, 
and that was my mind state. Probably that's what's grind up, man. state. Do you have uh? Do you have any favorite? I mean, I know I know it's hard to when you, when you write a lot of pieces and then your babies. It's hard to pick favorites. But do you have any favorite pieces from Project Grind State? Like if somebody was hearing it and they have five minutes, what song might they want to start with? I guess it depends on the person, um, but I'm gonna tell you to start with. Listen to it from beginning to end, but yeah, just in yeah. case you don't have just in <laughs> start case, with the start. Just in case you don't have time. No making excuses. What, what what should they maybe? I'm gonna tell you to start with hood nigga logic. Okay. Because it just explains what a hood nigga would be thinking about, and I ain't saying just a hood nigga. Not like he have to be hood for the rest of his life, but I'm just saying while he's there, that's why it's on Project Grind State. Because when you get into a certain place in your mind. You're in another sublet of your mind. Like, people don't understand that shit, bro. Like, this shit is psychology. You feel me? Like, that's why you got to pull yourself out of this shit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You can't be that way forever. So, I put myself on the inside of that. That's hood nigga logic. And I was thinking about everything that a hood nigga would have to do in order to motherfucking survive. And that's logical for a hood nigga. Nice. So, don't tell me I'm wrong for doing this shit because... You can't tell me I'm wrong if I'm thinking like that if you're not helping me think another way. We're going to link to I'm that saying. song. We're going to link to that song in the description of the video. We're going to make sure y'all get to hear Hood Nigga Logic and the entire Project Grind State um, album. That's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, in the day, like one, one um, thing that I've always tried to do with Dark Knight Records is try to find exactly what direction to take it in. And these days, the subtitle to Dark Knight Records is reality-based hip-hop music in the age of artificiality specifically that because mm. really like what you were talking about with project grind state that's like literally it li it's l the literal manifestation of reality based hip hop mm. music in the age of artificiality because like we 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 live in the time of of rainbow dreads and skinny jeans and but he got a mumble. how you got a 30 clip in some skinny jeans like where is it and and uh you know, like it's 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 not it's hard not to it's hard not to notice that it's just some clown shit going on. Right. Um. Like so so the reality that that you spit in Project Grind State and and the things that were going on in your life at that time that's that's what people are gonna hear when they play that record. Definitely. Project Def Grind State. Don't don't forget. We're gonna link Project to that. Grind Make State. sure you Hood check that nigga out. Logic. Yeah. If you don't hear shit else, listen to that. And if you don't hear shit else <laughs> after that, listen to motherfucking um, let it go. Definitely. You heard it. Definitely. That's what's up. Let it go. Yeah. How about how about um? Let me see. You we were talking earlier about like um, the the topic of God, and a lot of what I you know we have conversations about Pac and Pac, he he talked a lot about God and mm -hmm. and Jesus and his and his beliefs and his tracks, and like whatever you believe or don't believe in, man. It's like his thoughts. Like you remember that's that song. He literally called one of the songs. Who do you believe in? Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. song like that. So like, talk a little bit about like what God means to you, and 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 I don't mean like in the, in the terms of like does God exist? Yes or no? Like, cause a lot of people talk that black and white shit. Like, what right. when you when you think about God, what do you, what comes to mind? Well, the first person I see when I think about God is my great grandmother. Why is that? Because she taught me about the Bible, like. But she didn't force it down my fucking throat like people would be like, you got to be a Christian, you got to be a Christian. Did she read to you? Yes. She read me stories and shit. And now, even though, now that I'm being older, I see them shits unfolding. My middle name, Joseph. So guess what all I got to do? Open up the fucking Bible and read what Joseph was going through. Yeah. And guess what? It explains everything that I ever went through and everything that I'm ever going to go through. Yeah. And she would have never told me about that if it wasn't meant for me to see she didn't tell me about it because she wanted me to be religious or christian she told me about it because it was going to help me so god like, is really not like i don't think it's some superficial nigga just sitting in the sky fucking <laughs> lightning bolts and fucking with a big ass white beard you yeah. know what i'm saying god to me is her that's my god because she taught me all of that you know what I'm saying? So that's how I get a deeper connection yeah. with the universe by her telling me that shit. Now I'm like, okay, now I understand more because she Damn. taught me all the lessons that I would ever need. Like when I was five, six, seven years old and shit, yeah. like praying all night from 12 to four, five o'clock in the morning. 
You said great grandma. Yeah, my great grandma. You got to know your great grandma. That's some shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody gets to know their great grandma, yeah, yeah. man. That's that's a yeah, hell of a yeah. thing, man. See, that's that's another thing. Like, family is another thing that a lot of people transcend into their art. You know, photographers take pictures of their babies or other oh. people's babies for them, like, and they do photo shoots. Painters will paint it. Uh, tattoo even people people get their babies tattooed on themselves right you know what i mean so mm-hmm. like family is like a topic that comes up that like it, it's not like it's a topic that even comes up it's a topic you can't put down right you can't get away from the topic of family so one of the things you you um you know you've experienced like you you talked about earlier about your daughter like you're you're, you're doing grown man shit these days like uh, talk about the difference between your mentality from like the days of like 17 and when i first met you when you was just like really just hungry as shit and like very very independent versus now where like you have a broader frame of view and different uh look on life um i had to learn how to think more when i had kids because when i didn't have kids, and i i realized it once i started once my first daughter janai was about to be born like when I didn't have kids, or if everybody taking care of in my family, if when a nigga talk shit to me, <laughs> it's over for you, and it's over for me too. Like I don't give a fuck. But now, and I'm only telling you niggas this shit because it's some grown man shit. So don't start testing me when y'all see me out here bullshit because you might get fucked up. But nigga, I know a couple other moves, nigga, crane kicks, you know, some other <laughs> shit. But, so don't start the bullshit, but. Nowadays, bro, when people say shit to you and you got kids, you got to think, like, 30 days in a bing, oh, then I got to risk losing my job. Shit, yeah. Then, like, that's, and then you got to pay court costs. Fuck them. Bro, people going to talk regardless, but that man going to say the same thing in front of you that he going to say when he go in the motherfucking house. Fuck them, dog. As long as that man don't put his hands on you or motherfucking threaten your motherfucking family. To the point where you have to beat the shit out of them. Mm. Fuck them. Like, mm. motherfuckers can say whatever they want. I don't give a fuck, dog. Like, That's niggas real. can play all that gangster thug shit all they fucking want. That shit is a. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to start talking about that gangster and that thug shit See? either, nigga. Because I've been both of them, nigga. And I know both Both of that shit is a mask, nigga. A gangster, a gangster, to his heart. A gangster is in your heart. A thug is some shit that you have to be until you make it to another motherfucking level in life, nigga. So. Mm. After a while, you got to take that thug shit off. Because when you walk in the house and you take this fitted hat and this goddamn all black off and these chains and you take that money out your motherfucking pocket, nigga, you just CJ. You're not a thug. A thug is a disguise, nigga, for you to get to somewhere else, bro. Y'all niggas need to start motherfucking listening out this jump. Y'all niggas playing. You can't be a thug forever, nigga. If you think you're going to be a thug forever, nigga, pick your plot. Go ahead and go get your life insurance, nigga, for your fucking kids, bro. No, for real, bro. No, it's, and it's, start stacking your shit up because you know you're going to be gone by 40. It's it's un- it's tragically funny because some people really don't get that kind of shit. Like, it's, it's, like that's not really what you hear in Lil Pump's music. But, like, seriously, it's, uh, it's a lot of situations that people can make worse for themselves, isn't it? Like, they don't know how to leave things alone or they take things and just like find a way to make it worse versus if you gonna die die about something and don't die about the nigga beside you that wasn't gonna die about you mm. <laughs> don't do that die yeah. about your kids bro for real that's real when man. i go away <laughs> if i go away it's gonna be about my kids or my family nigga it ain't gonna be about no nigga in these streets unless that nigga was my brother bro for real yeah it's not gonna be like that I wanted to ask you earlier. You, I noticed you brought some books, man. Uh, what did you bring to the to the table here? You brought oh. some some brain food. Yeah, this the motherfucking Arabic alphabet right here. Cause everybody running around this bitch acting half Muslim. So <laughs> I need to decipher this shit. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to the Muslims. I fuck with y'all. Inshallah, Alhamdulillah. You feel me? I fuck with y'all hard. You know what I'm saying? God damn, every now and then, I shahada, you know what I mean? And what's this? Oh, This is the ahead. Arabic alphabet. It's how to read it and write it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just dibbling and dabbling, trying to yeah. read for myself because you can't keep getting on YouTube trying to learn shit all day. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, <don't>, y'all niggas, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Then this next joint is um, The Way of the Dragon, Young Samurai by Chris Bragford. 
I haven't started reading this yet, but it just looked intriguing. Y'all niggas got them free books in y'all hood and them little containers when y'all walk past the park. Get a couple free books. It don't hurt, bro. You ever do? Uh, you ever read an ebook? Like read on your phone? Like them? Like I like to read pages. a regular book. Yeah, I'm just old timey. I don't know why, man. Like handwritten I'm, classic book. Yeah, I like to read a book like yeah, that. And fold like the that page too. like a bookmark. Yeah, no, it's it's nothing like that, man. See, that's but one one thing like also like uh, people transitioning from the time like you know the karaoke days. You know the the what was what was the sound recorder day? Sound recorder. You know yeah, sound, hey, recorder. sound recorder. We recorded our Pro Tools. You you you've been in Mad Studios. One of the things that like never never gets old is that classic paper and interaction with the pen and stuff exactly. like that man it's that, the best thing you could do because i don't know if anybody ever thought about this but paper and pencil is one of the best things possible because you could hide so much in a book a nigga might not be able to interpret this and if yeah. somebody coming for you and this all the end and this all the knowledge that you got that's left over and you don't want them to know what's gonna happen to it right it's gone yeah. You got it in your mind. That's why Malcolm X said I don't write shit down. When I'm I gone, the shit's gone with me. Yeah. I gotta say, I didn't, I didn't like. Learn, I that's didn't what's wrong. The X. even books now. I think I could take the same book right here and put my name on it and go print it up and put it out there now because somebody else then gave me a fucking idea. <laughs> and all I gotta do is switch it the fuck up. That's what yeah. people. That's all people doing now. Yeah, man. Nah, like the reason there's patents is because people be stealing ideas, man. That's, people cover your ass, man. Mm-hmm. That copyright. That you gotta get your you copyright. Gotta, yeah, get the get them records going. But yeah, man. All right. So it's 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 2018. It's the age of Trump. <laughs> you you a grown dude. Um, a lot of people are online watching YouTube. You know whether whether we like it or not, and whether and some people maybe be using YouTube responsibly or more responsibly than others. Mad people are listening. A lot of ears are open. A lot of people are, are putting their two cents out. It's it's the time of the podcast, the independent albums, the you know the the independent I love film independent festivals, yeah. right? So what what do you what do you say to like people who inevitably? I mean, because people are gonna speak their two cents whether they post themselves on mm-hmm. Instagram. Or on Snapchat or on Facebook, people are putting themselves out there some way, shape, or form. It's not always in bars. It's not always in an artistic format. But we expose ourselves. What would you say to somebody who's like considering using this platform? I mean, talking about somebody who's like a young teen or even younger who's like about to set foot in this fucking mess that's social media and the internet, like. Watch out for or be conscious of what? You already know what the fuck to watch out for. You watching YouTube all night looking at Illuminati videos and shit like that. So just, and it ain't even about Illuminati. Just don't let people take over what the fuck you doing and shit. Fuck the Illuminati. I ain't worrying about none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have to worry about that if you're not trying to gravitate towards that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if that shit was presented upon you, if you don't want to fuck with it, don't fuck with it. But y'all young niggas need to realize y'all need to get y'all money together. Because guess what's going to happen? If you don't got your money together, the biggest dope dealer in your hood going to pull up on you and sign you forever. You see it done all the time. I ain't going to put no motherfucking names out there by none of these niggas in the industry. Y'all see the shit done all the time. When he signed you, you know dope dealers, we collecting, goddamn, <laughs> every month. You know how the game go. Don't be stupid. Get your own motherfucking money together, nigga. Get your nigga that make beats, that make you 10 motherfucking beats, pay him for it, go record that shit at his house, go copyright it, nigga. Ask your mama for $200. Tell her what the fuck you trying to do, nigga. Don't let these niggas control y'all when y'all Second. get in the music industry, dude. Y'all gonna be sounding like the next man. That's why everybody fucking rap the same. Secondly, copyright your motherfucking name. Copyright your own motherfucking business. It do not. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to get a motherfucking barcode. It's not that hard. Bad. Thirdly, keep on reading books. Y'all niggas be saying shit and pronouncing shit, bro. And 
that shit don't even sound right. And y'all really be thinking that shit is okay. Did no, that shit is teaching our kids that they can say that bullshit, but any way they want to. It's 25-year-old niggas out here stuttering like that shit is funny. That shit ain't funny, nigga. Now, every time I tell y'all watch your bitch ass on YouTube, they think they got to talk with a fucking speech impediment. When I didn't had to send a couple of kids to school for speech impediment to get them out of that, yeah. y'all. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel. Like, did like, you see? Did you see that clip on? I, I saw a clip on Instagram. Some I forgot if it was Lil Pump. It's one of these dudes. He said, "Cause I don't really know how to read." Like he, like this, this cat. I gotta find that clip, and I'm, I'll, I'll probably link it to this. But he, like, on video was just like, "I don't even know how to read." Dudes, like in his. Must be in his twenties and shit. Like it's some clown shit, read. man. It's some cl- and like owning that shit. Like I don't even know. How to, like not even saying it with no shame. So like yeah, man. Like you gotta keep reading, man. So yeah, man. Like if you if you're on a platform, man. Like it's what it is, man. You're gonna put yourself out. In reading the world. is fundamental. Yeah, man. Fundamental. You gotta, you gotta, Fund. Gotta, pay the mental. Yeah. Pay man. it. Pay your brain, nigga. Damn, if you keep paying attention to every motherfucking thing else, nigga. Yeah. Pay attention to your goddamn all, self. We're gonna link to mixtape. Motherfucker, hey, y'all here fucked up. Yeah, man. So we're gonna link to all. We're gonna link to mixtape volume one, volume two. Uh, Sino also dropped the verse on MC's ass like they don't know. For volume three, we're gonna link to all his music. Y'all know what it is, man. We're in the date and age of Trump and social media, man. Y'all gotta be careful what you do, what you say, because, like, everybody's. Be careful of what you think. You know what I mean? So, thoughts manifest action, and we gotta be responsible for our shit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man. Sino Gaddafi, man. Any uh, any links, any uh, social media you need to let I'm people know? I'm the same about? on everything Instagram, Sino Gaddafi, S I N O K A D A F I, YouTube. Up. I got hacked on the book again, so I ain't get up there right now. Snapchat, Sino Gaddafi. My man is reality-based hip-hop music yeah. in the day and age of artificiality. One more time, Sino yeah. Gaddafi. Yeah. Appreciate it, dog. Pleasure Thank you being, for being here, here dog. Man. Salute. Hell yeah. Yo.